doing some shopping. Ninja Turtles? Nope. Adventure Island? Nope. Legend of Zelda? No. Is it Warriors? No. Hmm. And there's Palace? No. Hmm. Oh, Karna. What about Karna? We could try this out. I haven't played this game in a long time. I think this game is okay. Now I have some ups and downs conversations about this game with my friends. They be like, okay, what is the what is a decent game that you play on the NES that we haven't tried? I'm like, oh okay, um How about Karnoff? They be like, what? Karnoff? Karnoff was a terrible game. That little little thick mustache guy walking around with his belly hanging out, shooting fireballs. When he jumps, he floats and everything. He's a terrible character in a terrible game. I'm like, I think the game is okay. I mean, look at him. He shoot fireballs. <laughs> but anyway, this game gets a lot of hate. And I'm trying to figure out why. So I haven't played this game in a long time. So we're gonna go do a playthrough together and review this game and see terrible or how decent this game is. Let's find out. All right. Time to play some video games. Oh no. You hear that? That doesn't sound good. Cheap system. Okay, finally got it on. Let's go. Okay, while I'm playing the first stage, I'll give you a quick history of Data East. See, in the late 80s, the arcades were still big in North America, but showing the signs that the golden age of arcade industry is slowly fading away. We had game companies like Navco, Taito, SNK, Calcom, Midway, and Konami that were keeping arcades industry alive a little bit longer. Data East was founded by Tukai University alumnus Tetsuo Fukuda. Data East created a lot of arcade hits, and one of those games is called Karnoff. Karnoff released it first in Japan, 1987. Then later on, it released it in North America in 1988. Then later on, it released on other gaming computer systems like the Commodore 64, ZM Spectrum, and the Macintosh Apple. Hmm. Now, let's talk about the graphics. Graphics is okay for a game that released in the late 1980s. You can clearly see that they try to put a lot of details on the landscape, items, the enemies, and Karnov himself. They could have gave Karnov a more appealing look, but this is game design in the 80s. Hold on, wait a minute. Hmm, I just thought of something. I got this weird deja vu feeling about this character, Karnov. Every time I look at him, it's like I have an image of another person in my head. Because I've seen this similar imaged before. He's, he reminds me of the Orange Sheik. I mean, look at him. He's bald head. He got an upper physique. His eye, his, his mustache. 
it's kind of thick, you know. If the R Sheik would have seen this game, he'd have a big fit. Now I have a problem with the music. The problem is that it plays from the first stage to the last stage until you fight the final boss. The Japanese version has five different soundtracks, but the US version has four different soundtracks if you count in Karnal's Delph theme. The main theme is not annoying for the first two stages, but after the second stage, you will start to think, why not make more music for the stages? I mean, you got nine different stages in the game. Why not make more music? After you done playing this game, I promise you, you will hear this music through your head over and over and over. When you go outside, when you working, when you using the bathroom, are you hear is do, 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 do. After hearing this music over and over and over and again, it feel like your nose will be bleeding. You be looking in the mirror, your eyes be turning red, your brain will be oozing out of your ears. It's ridiculous. It's like your brain is tapping out. If you don't want to hear the music, just put your TV on mute. Now let's get into this gameplay. Finish the first stage, now I'm at the second stage fighting this second boss. His name is the Beast Tamer. He's shooting these fireballs at me. He's really easy. Now the old guy is throwing knives, all you have to do is duck. He's really simple, I'm not breaking the sweat. <laughs> Easy. Alright, stage 3, here we go. Now I gotta climb on this tree to jump over to the other side. Here we go. Ah, there. Yeah. No, oh, oh no, look at that, look like a bunch of flat snowballs. Gotta shoot that down. Get this shoe. Cause I need that to jump high. Now what curl up shoes will make you jump high? What? What just happened? Alright, let's try again. Here we go. Shoot these enemies down. Yeah. Gotta go down here. Through this path. What the heck is this? Oh well, got rid of that thing. Okay, now, see these K blocks? If you collect 50 K blocks, you will get a free life. So make sure you collect them. Hmm, I wonder if I could jump up the ladder instead of climbing up the ladder. Let me try. Go down for a minute. Jump! 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 Now when you hear this alarm sound, that means you need to use your mask. And this mask helps you to find hidden items. So, be wise to use it. The sound that you're hearing right now, that different tone, that means that your item is going to run out soon. And that mask item will not last long. So it is wise to get your item as fast as possible. Alright, I gotta go up here. I gotta make this ladder come out. Get the shield. And get these couple of canes. Because I gotta get ready for this boss fight. I gotta pull out my shield because I'm gonna need it. Now, this boss fight is kind of tough for the first time. But once you learn that the weak spot of this dinosaur is his head, and it's easy. There you go. Now, the fourth stage that we are on the Ice Land. Now, I gotta make it through here, shooting these enemies down. What is this, bodybuilders coming from the sky? Huh. Gotta watch out for these mini volcanoes. Looks threatening, does it? <laughs> now, just blasting through, blasting through. Wow, this game is kinda easy. It sure didn't feel like this when I was a kid. Oh well. Hmm. I need to use the wings to get across. That's what the alarm means. And uh, what the? What is this, a Medusa? Some type of s snake woman? Oh, uh, I gotta get out the way. She's shooting too many fireballs. Uh, I might die. She too hard. Uh, I beat her. Let's go. 
fifth stage, the water stage. Now the way he's going down, he's reacting to the air like he's already in the water. So I don't know what his problem is. I guess Karnarv like to float in the air. Why are you under the water? You can use the snorkeling mask. It helps you to swim faster. So you won't become an easy target to the enemies. But me, I don't use it because I don't need it. Wait a minute, is he going through the ground? What? Wait a minute, let me see that again. Yeah, he's going through the ground. You mother biscuit. Now, here comes this green fish thing. I don't know what to call him until I looked him up on the internet. His name is Tepu Mizu. That's a funny name, right? Well, just kill him. Just get him out of your way by blasting through with your fireballs. Continue forward. Collect your items. And get ready to go back in the water. Now I'm back under the water. Killing the seamen. And here comes this big clam. And here comes the dragon. Oh, swimming dragon. He's coming. Oh. I'm back out of the water. Ah. <sighs> Gotta fight the T-Rex again. Now here's a problem. They recycle these boss fights. Now for this stage, why not create like a, a monstrous turtle? Or a robotic sea creature? Made it to the sixth stage. Let's go. Hmm. I've got a little bit of new enemies. It's just a different colors. Not much difference. Climb up the ladder. Tepu Mizu is back. Now what I agree with is using him as a regular enemy now is good because I already killed him. He's nothing special anymore. Hear that alarm? That means time to use the mask so I could get these secret items and the secret caves. Alright, let's move forward. I'm gonna fight these dead owls. Whatever they look like. Hmm, a shield. I surely need that. Yes. Now, uh, um, got this feeling like I gotta fight a boss. Yes, yes, the Medusa lady. Well, that's what I thought when I was a kid, but her real name is a snake witch. Well, she's dead now. Stage seven, in the desert. Now I'm gonna hop on top of the pyramid. You could do that, or you could go inside the pyramid. It's a two-way entrance. I just noticed something. Every time Karnov jumps, you get this impact sound effects coming from his legs. Like he could shoot out whirlwinds. That would be an awesome attack for Karnov. Hmm, I wonder. Hey Karnov. What, what? Can you like do one of those powerful jumps for me? The one, the incredible jump? Yeah, the one that you do on your video game. Oh, that one, okay, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, one, two, three! Now, I died this part the first time. The second time, here I am, shooting the heck out of this mummy. It takes a lot of hits. And these things do not play, so you better be ready for them. Because they will not show no mercy. Look at them. That was close. Okay, now. Look like I'm stuck. Where to go? What? Well, I can't climb up there. What can I do? Oh, I see. I sense a boss fight. Who I have to? Oh, the two-headed dragon. Okay, what's the name of this monster? Ghidorah. Looks like one. Well, anyways, it's dead now. Finished. Stage eight. Now, on this spot, you have to keep jumping around until the wings appear, because you're gonna need it to get across. But the very first time that I played this stage, I didn't know what to do. I was stuck. Stuck there for a good while. 
Oh, and your wings, it doesn't last long, so you better find a platform to stand on. Because you're going to need more than one wings to get across the stage. I don't see any wings over there, and I can't jump up there, so I just had to do the leap of faith. Just guessing the wings is down here. See, got one right there. Now, gotta use the wings and fly up. But keep your eyes open and be careful. On this part of the stage, you would think you're in the dead end. But you got these bombs that you can collect. And you can use them against these walls to blow it up. And once you blow up these walls, you collect the wings and fly your way up. And here you go, another boss fight. Getting door round two. Oh yeah, we finally here at the last stage. Let's get this over with. Now, blast through these blue army knights. Collect your items so you could get ready for the last boss. But that's something that you think you should be doing, right? Well, you don't have to. You will see when I get to the last boss fight. Now I gotta go through these rock guys. They dance around back and forth. I have to walk to the right just to make the monster walk to the right so I can go up in the ladder and get, make my way up. Now you have this mummy right here. Take like 10 or 11, 12 hits. <laughs> Trying to kill him, but he's breaking the rules and going through the walls. And I'm trying to kill him because I think I have to. Because I have to make my way up. But I found out you don't have to kill the mummy. But I want to kill the mummy because he's annoying. I gotta kill him. I gotta kill him. I gotta kill him. Oh, I gotta run. What? The, what? He killed me. So on this spot, I fell off the cliff. And these green birds keep me spawning. I'll speed it up for you all. Watch this. Look at that. They keep coming back. They don't want me to get across. Like why? Stop cheating. Crazy game. Oh, the mummy is back. Should I fight it? Nope, I'm running. I'm getting out of here. Oh, an open path. Nice. To the final boss. That's even nice. Welcome to one of the easiest boss fights in video game history. All you have to do is shoot him in the head every time he stick his long neck out of these three windows. And just keep on doing it. Rinse and repeat. Basically. And he's dead. Can you see that? That's how easy it is. Wow. Might as well be fighting Glass Joe from Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Oh, well, there you go. That's Carnage, the end of the game. Congratulations. By far, fun factor, the game is mediocre at best. Huh, am I forgetting something? Hmm. Oh, I forget. I gotta go shopping.